YouTube and welcome to my Let's Play Ion. Okay, so um, we left off with uh, my little technist here uh, doing some quests in the Odella Plantation, as I mentioned uh, previously. So we need to kind of get these uh, quests out of the way before we can do the last um, set of turn-ins and uh, go ahead and do the um, ascension to uh, Deva which is then where she gets her wings and basically gets a whole bunch of uh, new abilities and other things. Um, although, uh, it's still going to be just a bunch of questing up until she's about level 20. Um, and then at that point, that's when we can start entering into the um, what's known as the PV PVE um, area, where uh, you could potentially encounter um, Elios players as well as um, uh, the Bolar, even though um, initially it's just kind of this this area where you end up flying most of the time, and initially it's just a bunch of quests and, and things, and you don't kind of um, engage in the whole PvP um, type of, of uh, encounters right away. Um, they kind of ease you into all of that um, as you level up and everything. So that by the time you're at the max level, which I don't even know what the max level is right now. I think the max level was 50. It might be 60 or 70 now. I, I honestly don't know. It's um, This game is upgraded a few times. and um, I always seem to get distracted. I get about halfway um, through leveling. I think I have one character now who's... Uh, I think she's about level 30 now, and um, just didn't get past leveling her before uh, wanting to start recording videos, and I'm like, well, I, you know, she's already level, you know, 30-something, and so I didn't want to start videos with her um, kind of midway up, and I wanted to start the videos uh, where she's lower down, so... Although, if uh, if any of you who are watching this and, and enjoy these videos, if you would like to see me doing anything with my uh, my higher level person, um, or if you'd rather wait and, and watch um, this one uh, get up to that level, I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comments if if you'd rather see some of that, or you know, maybe not a rather, maybe I'll just randomly throw in some extra videos of me playing the other character once in a while. Um, I, not sure how I would how I would handle that, but I would still want to continue um, trying to level um, my technist first. So be that as it may. Okay, so I just kind of skipped past a bunch of her questing here because it's basically was a, a random number of, of doing the same thing all the time. So she now just kind of um, transported herself back here to um, to the, her home base, so to speak and uh, is kind of turning in her quests and she has to kind of pick up she has to pick some uh, some uh, items that she can you know has, sometimes the quest rewards you have to you get a choice um they don't just give you whatever i mean they could easily just like oh you're a leather wearer you can you can only wear leather so here's your uh here's your thing but um in some cases i think from a strategic point of view um, let's say you're a plate wearer, but there's better stats on a piece of cloth armor, for example, that might actually be better in certain circumstances. And so that's probably why they allow you to choose uh, what, you, what you can pick up. I mean, it's silly for me. Um, she can't wear anything more than leather. And so it would be silly for me to pick plate unless I wanted to just, like, nothing is... Um, as good as what I'm already wearing, in which case I would pick the highest level item and just sell it for gold. Or Kina, I think is what it's called in this game. Okay, so now I went and I did a, whole, a bunch of other, you know, little tedious tasks, and now I'm here um, turning in the, the last bits uh, to Munin, and uh, we now are going to get into um, the sequence that gets her to ascend. So here, level nine uh, ascension is the uh, is the quest, and so uh, first she has to go and talk to um, the three. Or there's three witches. She's only met um, two of them. There's a third witch that she still has to uh, to visit. Now, back when I first started playing this, um, and you and you ended up doing this, 
Um, you had to run all the way back to each one of these witches by yourself, manually. It was a long, tedious process. Um, I think maybe because I'm on a fast track server, maybe they've the, that's one of the things that they fast track. Um, so I get to cohere, and it just takes me straight to the witch I have to talk to. I go ahead and talk to her, and then she kind of reads my fortune. You can pause and read that if you want to. Okay, and then uh, it delivers me to the second witch, and I get to talk to her, and she does the same thing. And again, if you want to read what is being um, said, you can uh, just pause the video and read it if you wish. And uh, then once we, uh, yeah, so she's she's reading her hand, so. And uh, yeah, so she's doing that, and now I get to be sent to the third witch. Pretty soon, almost. <laughs> I guess I was reading these. So, but uh, if I if I read faster than you can, go ahead and pause. Okay, so here's the third witch, and the third witch happens to be young and attractive, and not an old crone like the other two. Alrighty. So here we go, and uh, she has to get a card from her as well. So she has to look in the uh, in my eyes. One looks at the hand, one looks at the eyes. I forget what the other one does, but um, they're all kind of. Reading her fortunes, I think past, present, future, I think are the, the kind of things. Alright, so now we go back to Munin. Yep, there he is. So that goes way faster than it used to. <laughs> the old way I would have taken practically an entire um, episode just for me to, to, to finish all that. So he's taking the three cards now. And doing something with them. I forget exactly what. But now uh, we kind of have to go through a, another kind of dream sequence. I think it's a future dream sequence, if I remember correctly. Oh yes, show me the future. So here we go. This is the prophecy. And this looks... Um, Somewhat similar to what we see with, I think the one, the one which kind of shows us this, except in this case, um, I actually have control. The other one was kind of a vision, and I didn't actually have control of what I was doing. And here I had control. I mean, I don't have control while I'm flying, uh, but I did have control of, um, you know, talking to the guy and, and accepting the quest and that kind of thing. And uh, this is kind of the area that you end up going to for the PvPvE kind of stuff. It looks a little different than this, but um, it's it's basically this kind of area where you're flying around and you're fighting against the Ilios and the Bilar. Uh, the Ilios are going to be other players. Uh, the Bilar, so that's the PvP part, and then the Bilar attack you as well, and that's the PvE part. And so it's you know you could be attacked for both at the same time. And see here again is uh, where I get some uh, control over things and I actually have to win this fight. Although to be perfectly honest, it, I'm kind of guaranteed to win this fight because you can see I'm not getting almost I'm getting almost no damage at all. And uh, here we go. I've got this is the commander now that I have to attack. Yep, brigade brigade general Hillian, and uh, he's a he's an Elios as well. But in this sequence. It's definitely not a um, another player. It's definitely an NPC, and uh, he does this special attack. So I, I basically attack him as far as I can, and once I get him to a certain level of of de deadness, <laughs> uh, if, once I injure him enough, um, it triggers this sequence here, where you can see like this mighty battle. And it's interesting that when Technus ends up pulling out a sword. I mean, she's not a warrior. She's a, she's a gunslinger, basically. And, you know, why in the world they would have her... Well, I think they, they pre-record or pre-render these things and the fight is always with a sword. It doesn't matter, I think, what class you are. Um, I think it's just easier for them. And since this is free-to-play, I can't complain too much about that. Okay. And so now she just wakes up and she's like, oh my gosh, that was hard. <laughs> and here's Munin showing up, showing up, and it's like, wait a minute, how did you get out of your cage? Out of your prison? 
and now we have to decide our path. And I think I mentioned this in the last episode where, you know, at this point, most other classes, the older classes, you actually had a choice between two paths. But uh, with the gunslinger and with the new um, kind of musical, magical musical um, class, uh, you don't get a choice of path. You can only choose one path. So once we're done reading this little bit here, we can... I do not fear the future, on that day I'll help you, blah, blah, blah. Tell me more about gunslingers. So those are, um, the, the, you know, usually you, you, you get two options. Tell me more about blah or tell me more about blah, and you can read the two and then you can choose. But in this case, again, um, I only have a gunslinger as an option. So there we go. So she is now officially a gunslinger. I mean, she's still a technus class, but gunslinger is her path. I don't know if they'll ever introduce a, a second path for uh, for the technist or not. I'm not sure what a second path would make sense for um, for someone using a gun. I'm not quite sure what what that would be. I mean, I can see like the uh, the one class, and I forget the names of all of these, what they call them here. But there's one class where you can choose to either be more of a rogue or more of a hunter um, type of thing. So I think I talked about that last time too. Okay, so we now have been transported to um, the great city of Pandemonium. This is the uh, the home city for all of the Asmodee. And it's this kind of great, uh, massive, giant um, stone uh, city. How did you get in here? And, oh yeah, so these guys are trying to Relax. attack me. And he's Everyone, like, no, 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 we're, we're expecting is this her. How you greeted Deva? Oh, she's sorry, a Deva. Sir. Well, she's not officially a Deva yet, but she will be very, very soon. Can and you can also see that I kind of put a hat on her. Um, I picked that hat up just before I talked to Moonin the last time, or the the, the just before I, I started the ascension sequence, and it kind of gives her a little bit more um, stats and stuff. So um, I put that on her. I kind of cut out the footage of me doing that because I, I spend a lot of time like looking at my inventory and stuff, and I figure that stuff's kind of boring. So here's another quest, but um, I know where to go for the uh, doing the ascension thing. It's down here. Oops. I forgot. It's like, okay, I gotta go down the ramp over this way. And see if I had uh, wings, I could uh, glide down this. See if I, you, you, typically you hit your space bar twice and it, you get your wings out and you can glide, even if you can't fly. Um, Pandemonium is one of the areas where you're not allowed to fly no matter what, so. But uh, this is kind of like the main palace um, area. I have to talk to the high priest. And uh, so we can get underway with a little ceremony. So here we go. These people are bowing and kneeling to us. And I, I love the gossips. This Deva. <laughs> this has got to be a joke. <laughs> X Raider becoming a Deva, blah blah blah. Yeah, just you know, like th this doesn't happen in the Ilios uh, Ascension Show thing. They're, they're like, oh, you know, congratulations, blah, blah. So yeah, the the Asmodee are much more um, suspicious, and in there's the a lot more info and stuff. I recognize you but as uh, a Deva. yep, you Young recognizes Deva, me as a Deva. You be and you prove that you're a Deva by producing your wings, once because once only Devas all. have wings. Nobody else has wings. So, and then everyone's cheering and clapping and stuff, and even, even little Ray. <laughs> and this guy's all nodding in approval. And so once you've finished the um, ascension ceremony, uh, you then can go to your trainer. And so you, from now on, all of your training happens here in, um, in Pandemonium, at least up until a certain level. I think then there's a, another uh, level of trainer even beyond that, Apple's or in this case, learning. Preceptor, a uh, but basically a trainer. With and they arm, give you a gift a of uh, a new weapon. Power. And uh, it's, it's typically it's always like way better than whatever weapon you've picked up so far. So uh, in typically, I don't think um, in any case I've actually replaced my weapon for any of my classes um, before level 15 or 20 uh, with this weapon. It's usually a good weapon. But anyway, I think that's enough for this week. Thank you so much for joining me, and until next week, take care. Bye-bye.